Okay, so I'm going to talk about the new universal built um, option that we have in Game Salad. And uh, I read up that some people are still having troubles with this. So I'm going to just try to quickly help those people out. Um, first off, I want to just mention that there may be more than... There's at least two ways of doing this. There may be more. I haven't really thought about it that much so far. But... Um, I'm gonna just try to explain them, and I'm gonna just and I'm gonna show you guys in action. How to do it. So, um, the first method I believe most people are doing is um, they're starting off with multiple partners to solve their common issue, and then they are planning with that in mind that the crop option is gonna cut off the top and the bottom off the game. So, with that in mind, they're planning their game to fit between those two lines. Let me just try to outline that so you can see it. Let me just try to make it thicker. Um, and that is pretty straightforward. However, I personally would not like to have all my resources in that, in a, such a area and not utilize the top properly on the iPad. So, with that in mind, I'm going to show you how I got around that problem. Uh, before I get to that, I just want to explain the other method that I'm going to show you. And that involves planning ahead of time and working in, a, in the 16 by 9 ratio and building your um, iPad build with that. Um, this box right here should simulate the iPad screen. And then with that, with a 16 by 9 image, you will have um, parts on the side that you can't really see until you get on an iPhone or an iPhone legacy or whatever. So um, I'm, first I'm going to start with this first method here. And that, for that, I have this here test image with some art from one of my games. And basically... Uh, I've, I've made these crop marks myself manually to help me uh, fit everything into that region. region. However, I would not like to have, you know, things like pause buttons down here or whatever this button may be and so forth. I've just used pause buttons for placeholders right now and I've put one in every corner so you can see later on how that's going to work. And uh, buttons like this I've categorized as actors relative to frame. While the other actors that are part of my game that I've kept already between those lines are just regular actors that I obviously leave inside those lines. So uh, before I explain how everything's done, I'm going to show you guys what happens. So um, there is the iPad preview as it should look. And once we get on the iPhone, we go to crop. And though that may not seem correct, uh, that's because the buttons have in their change attribute function hasn't ran yet. So you need to reset that as if it was just launching on an iPad or an iPhone. And there you have it. Everything's in the right position relative to where the edge of the screen is. Uh, similarly, for the legacy iPhone, reset again, as I said. And there, everything's on the right position. There, with this sort of um, an approach, we can build for iPad and then everything else, keep everything within those lines, and then our other buttons that we want just on the edges, we will attack as follows. So, what I have here is uh, the stationary actors are just straightforward, like the planet. There's nothing in them. These crop marks, there's nothing in them. They're just guides. And uh, I've created three game attributes to begin with. These three are build platform height, build platform width, and an offset. These first two, the build platform height and width, you will need to fill in yourselves. And those basically are just the screen size 
uh, of the actual platform you're building for. As you, as you see here, it's an iPad, which is how you should be beginning your projects anyways if you want to make them universal and keep the quality, of course. And uh, of course, you can change those up if it's up in uh, plat portrait or landscape. Or but um, this is probably what it will look like for you. And then I've made this offset attribute, which will uh, it'll just take care of itself in a short while. I'll show you guys. And um, so what you can do is you can make yourself a little new actor and unlock it and place it somewhere off the screen and, you know, put in all your rules in there. But what I've done is I've just placed it right in the world one actor, which is basically your background. And that's where you change attribute, that offset attribute we just created, to what is on the screen right now, as you can see. I'm not really going to explain this. It's just some math that basically calculates how much the screen will shrink or scale, however you want to think of it. And uh, yeah, it's right here on the screen. I'm not going to bother reading it. And moving forward. That offset is going to give us a number for how much our actors relative to frame should move up or down. Now, um, to figure out whether an actor should move down or up, I've just implemented this simple check. If it's above the center line of the initial scene, which is this scene, which is 384, which is half of 768. And then if it's above it, it moves down. If it's below it, it moves up. And that's precisely what I have in this actor relative to frame. If position is greater than the build platform height attribute, which I created over two, then changes position to position minus offset. Otherwise, changes position to position plus offset. And that's all just in the Y position. The X positions will not be changed since the crop will keep will end up being with the same width. The screen will be the same width here, and it will just take those parts off. And um, yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna show you guys one more time what it's supposed to look like. Yep, that's fine. iPhone. Remember to keep it on crop and remember to reset as if the iPhone's first launching the scene. Here's your legacy. And since that big um, function that you guys should have wrote down works in a general method and not just in uh, specific cases, this will work for Nook landscape, for Kindle, or whatever else you want to build for. So yeah, that's method one. And in the next video, I'm going to explain the other method, which is a little bit more complicated. All right.